Hello, my name is Brian, and I'm going to show you how to make a floating medkit for your Roblox games. What we're going to do is we're going to make a floating medkit that will kind of oscillate up and down in a very smooth kind of motion. It will also spin, heal the player, and play a sound once um, the player touches it. So first we're going to get a model that looks like a medkit. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to just take the handle out of this tool because we won't need it. And then get rid of all this crud. And rename this medkit. Okay, so now that we have something that resembles a medkit, we're going to create a script inside of it. And the first thing we're going to do is make the medkit as soon as the game starts and the script starts running, um, it's going to place itself a certain elevation above the ground. Also, um, to make sure it stays up there, I'm going to set it to be anchored, and I'll go ahead and set can club defaults too. So, first things first, let's get the part. The script's got parent, so we're taking the script and getting the parent, which is the medkit part. Now, I'm going to make a function called init which initializes everything that we're going to need and remember to call it. Um, I, I forgot once, that's why I'm recording this again. So now we're going to set its position to be above the ground. So we're going to say part.position equals part.position plus a vector three. And if you don't know what a vector three is, you probably should be watching uh, simpler tutorials. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, we're going to set its y um, axis to be three studs above where it currently is as soon as the game starts. So let's see if that works. And it's floating above the ground. So we're going to have to take this, um, the current value that it's at now, we're actually going to have to save this for something that we're going to do later. So I'm going to go ahead and make a very call, variable called init pause and set it to nil. And as soon as the initialize function is called, I'm going to say init pause equals part dot position. But next we're going to make um, something called an oscillator. We're going to use a sine wave if you don't know what that is. Um, if you don't, I'll explain it. But first let me just um, start making the oscillator. So for the oscillator we're going to need, um, first we're going to need this sine variable for the oscillator. So I'll make a function called sine. Now make sure your function name um, it has different case than your variable names. My convention is variables are lowercase and functions are uppercase, but you do you. First, we're actually, sine is going to take a parameter. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the sine function continuously add num to sine. So it'll keep adding whatever we put inside num to sine. And then once that gets that number gets to uh, above 360 at or above 360, so greater than or equal to 360, then we're going to set it to zero. So it will go around 360 degrees, make it back to zero, and just keep going in a circle like that. The other thing we're going to need for that is an event loop or a run function. So I'm going to make that here. So we're going to use a while loop. So while true do, so this is going to continuously um, execute no matter what. Um, and make sure to put this weight here because if you have multiple while loops in your game and you don't put this weight here, it will just get stuck on one of the while loops and never have time in between its cycles to address the other while loops. So that will cause problems. So inside of here, we're going to put sign, and I'm going to make the value of number five. So it'll keep adding five to it. And then I'm going to print sign to make sure that this is all working properly. But I also have to remember to execute run. So let's look. Um, I'll show you my output window here. So as you can see, it's going to 360 and it's going back to zero. So that's all working. Cool. Okay, so now we're going to put this number, um, make it into something that we can, oops, sorry, we're going to make it into something that we can use. So sine is a math function for trigonometry. And what it does is it gives you a number 
uh, between 1 and negative 1. So if your degree angle is at 360 or 0, it will return 0. If it's 90 degrees pointing up, then it will be 1. If it's 180 degrees, which is at the same elevation as the 360 degrees, then it will also be 0. But when it's at 270 pointing down, then it will return negative 1. So as we're the sign is going around in a circle with the degree angles, it's the, the math sign function is going to keep um, going between 1 and negative 1, and we're going to use that value to make the health pack float up and down by modifying its y-axis. So we're going to return that with math.sin. It's not sign like I've been saying it, but that's how you pronounce it. And we're going to say math.sin sign. Now there's one caveat to this. We're using sign, we're using degrees, and math.sign uses radians. And if you don't know what radians are, they're like degrees, but it works with pi. So 2 pi is 360, 1 half of pi is 90. Uh, I'll show a picture. Um, so yeah, those are radians, and we're going to convert our degrees to radians with math.rat. So it's going to be super rad, guys. No, it'll convert degrees into radians, and math.deg will do the opposite. It'll convert radians to degrees. So let's print this out to make sure it's working. Now I'm going to make this 5 into something smaller just so it's not going so fast so you can more easily see what's going on. So if we look over here... We'll see it's going down from 90 and now it's at negative and now it's going back up so that will be the floating of our health pack let's go back over here and actually set the position based on what sign is giving us so we're, i'm going to say parts.position and this is why we need init position so we can get the position that it starts out at and then modify that by adding a vector that uses the sign value that we're getting. So it's like this. So init pause equals vector 3.new. Then we're going to only add it to the y axis. So um, x and z will be 0. So we're going to take sine 5 and. Um, so we have the init position and we're going to add whatever the sign value is. So it will keep going between one and negative one. So it will appear as if it's floating. So let's start that and you can see it floating up and down. It's gone a bit fast or it's, um, it's floating a bit high up and down. I might want to change that to something lower, but you can see the one and negative one is cycling through that circle of the sign and giving us a cool effect. So um, just to make it not float high, as high, this is giving a number between one and negative one. I'm gonna multiply it times 0.5 so it, um, it doesn't float as strongly. And I'm gonna go ahead and print out um, parts Y position just so you can see the number getting modified as you see the health pack oscillating up and down. So you can see over here, um, it's going up to four, then down to three, up and down, and you can see it physically going as well. So that's why we did all that stuff, just so we can get that, that nice cool effect. Now we're going to make it rotate too, but that's that process is a lot less involved, so don't worry about that. So you just say parts.orientation, which is its rotation, um, equals part.orientation plus, and then we're going to add a vector. 3 because orientation also takes a vector 3 and we're going to spin it on its y-axis so I'm going to say it will keep adding rotate speed to its um, y-axis every cycle of this while loop run function so I'm gonna go ahead and set rot speed to um, mm, 100 let's see what that looks like yeah i think i think that's good i think that's it might be slow but if, as you can see that's not as hard to do but i should probably set that to something like two. okay that's more re reasonable like what i want so we have a cool 
health pack that floats up and down and spins. So isn't that neat? Now we're going to have the actu have it actually do the function of what a health pack is supposed to do, which is heal you. So to do that, we're going to use an event of the part class. If you want to look into that, go into the look up the Roblox API and go under the part section and then go under events and it'll show you all the events relating to part. But the one we're going to be using is touch. So part.touched is the event. So we can add a function to touch with the colon that will connect it to um, one of our own functions. Now that sounds kind of confusing, but I'll explain. When the part is touched, the touched event will fire and then connect it to a function. Like this looks confusing here. I'll I'll just say this. So saying what I did just now with the function parentheses, all that weird stuff that you might not have seen before. Um, it's the same as saying connect whatever, whatever, and then putting all your stuff in here. Um, but the reason that we were doing it this way is because touched returns the parts that um, our part touched. So, and to get that, um, that value that it returns, um, we're going to put a function parameter into here and it will automatically place what touched returns into this variable. You don't have to say other part, it can be anything. Now we're going to test if that part is a part of a human or just some random part that, um, that we can't heal. So to do that, we're going to uh, make a local variable called human and we're going to set that to equal to other parts dot parent find first child humanoid now humanoid is an object that's inside of the player that stores its health values its speed all sorts of different things so what we're doing is we're taking other part so the part that got touched taking the parents of it which for if if the other part is a player, it will return the model of the player. I'll show you visually up here in a bit. And then it will use the function find first child humanoid to check and see if there's a humanoid in there. We could just say dot humanoid, but if the other part isn't a part of a player, and if we say human here, humanoid here, it'll error out because um, you're giving it an address for something that doesn't exist. But if we use find, we're if it doesn't exist, this find first child function will return nil. But if it, it does find a humanoid, it will return the humanoid. So that might sound confusing, but basically if the other part is a humanoid, then we can um, modify its health. And if it's n nil, then it wasn't a humanoid and we don't have to worry about it. So from this variable, we can say if human, then so saying if human is the same as saying if human is not equal to nil or if human exists. So if this find first child function finds a humanoid in the part we touched, then get the health parameter of humanoid. So humanoid that health equals hum or human that health equals human health plus heal amount. And I'm going to make that a variable up here too. This equals 25. That should be good. So this should work as it is. So what I was saying is this is the model of the player. So say our torso touches the health pack, the touched event will return the torso and then it will get the parent, which is me, the model, and then it will search for humanoid. So once it finds humanoid, it will then get the parameter health and add the heal amount to it. So let me set heal uh, the health to something lower so it has something to heal and then I'll touch the health pack so you can see my health came back now I forgot one thing the health pack is supposed to disappear once we touch it or else it'll just infinitely heal you forever oh that's weird um anyway so <laughs> to do that we're just going to say part destroy now I said that we're going to do one more thing and we're going to and that is adding a sound when we go to pick up the health pack. So you have some player feedback other than seeing your health bar fill up that you were healed. So I'm going to go under sounds, audio, go under heal. 
Okay, so I planned this, I typed in heal here earlier and it gave me a sound that I was planning to use for this video, but it's not here. But I found this one, which is the healing sound from Half-Life 2, so we're going to use that. So, um, if you had the med kit selected, you can just click this and it'll add um, the sound as a child of med kit. If you had the workspace or nothing selected, then um, just drag the sound into the med kit so we have it. So now we're going to um, get the address of the sound, just like we have the address of the part by saying sound equals part dot sound. So part sound. Now sound has a function called play. So sound play will play the sound. But there's one problem here. We're going to destroy the part right after we say play. Once we destroy it, it will destroy all the children of the med kit too. So we'll play the sound and then the sound will disappear and it won't play anything. And you'll wonder why it's not working. So the solution I like to use for this is setting the parent of the sound. So we're going to have the sound play, and then we're going to say sound.parent. So we're going to reparent it to the other part that was touched. So it will play the, the sound positionally where the player is. The medkit will destroy, and you'll have the sound and um, a used up medkit. So that should all work. So. We already know it heals, so I'll just walk up to it, and there we go. It played the sound, so that's how you make a health kit. Thank you for watching.